studio with the Admiral Bill Stubblefield, U.S. Marine Corps Sergeant Bill Kearns in Studio 2. And now we welcome in uh, Pastor Tim Garino, a veteran himself, too. Good morning, Tim. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, and it's great to be out on this crisp day here in January. Oh, <laughs> mercy. <laughs> What do you? What happens with the homeless on a day like this, Tim? Do well, they come uh, to the shelters? Oh or yeah, they they can come in. I, I've been out most of the morning bringing guys in. I was just telling you a story about a guy I ran into. Um, <laughs> yeah, and we just uh, we bring guys in. But right now, I think we're like sixty nine, almost seventy men that staying at our shelter right mm -hmm. now. Um, now, can they stay there during the day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can stay there during during the, when it's cold like this. We we it's called the uh, winter. Uh, extreme winter uh, weather like in the summertime when it gets real hot they can come in and they can sit there in the lobby uh they can sit in the room where they have um uh like chairs like lounge chairs once we get the kitchen because we have to at between every meal bill knows <laughs> uh, we have a lot to do they keep us busy we have a lot to do we at the end of every meal we have to uh everything got to be picked up swept up cleaned up washed up and then when everything's reset and then it takes about an hour or so they think they can sit in the dining hall and then drink coffee and sit there the rest of the day. But, no, they can sit in the lobby. They can stay in the mission. Uh, they can get showers. Uh, they can do all that stuff. We open that up. When it's extreme weather, we open it up to everybody. I went around today in a van picking people up, bringing them in. Um, it's, always, uh, it's always an adventure, very busy. Mm -hmm. We're uh, busy there. And then um, at the Haven House, which is the family shelter, uh, we have um, – I think it's 27, 26 total people there. All six apartments are full, and I think it's 15, 16 kids. I can't remember. Wow. I, I, but that, that's all full. And then up in Berkeley Springs, we have the women's shelter up there, and that's uh, seven or eight uh, people. There, we got to get Bill on camera. <laughs> I don't need two of them on me. <laughs> yeah, about we have. I think there's nine women up there. We're, we're full. So I, if you add all that up, it's almost, what, 104? My math is not real good. We're housing about 104 people right wow. now on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. But, yes, they can come stay during the daytime. Our, our meals are up, way up, um, for many reasons. Uh, we're serving quite a few meals. And as I gave you there, uh, as you see there, we had record-setting uh, last year, over 106,000 meals we served. Where's all the food coming from? Uh, donations. Uh, donations, and we thank God for the donations because we couldn't afford all that. I, mean, I was going to say your numbers are up. Probably yeah. your pantry is down. Yeah. Oh yeah, the pantry's down. The pantry's down. The numbers are up. Uh, we. Uh, I mean, there's so much we have to do. We just did the floors last year. We did all the kitchen floors. We did everything. Put in some new equipment. Uh, put in a new dishwasher which keeps breaking down, you know, they just don't make nothing like they used That's to. That's the truth. No, <laughs> and we don't. paid $12,000 for that thing, too. <laughs> so that, and that's getting, that's, it's been repaired, but it's just, it's one of those things, it's just like you just go, how can you pay that much for something, and it's not even a year old, and right. it's just, it's you, you know. Mm -hmm. And, well, we just had an AC and a heating unit go out on us, and Shenandoah uh, Heating and Air Conditioning were out there in a heartbeat put in a brand new one for us that was twelve thousand dollars um get all that up because um just got to have it i mean when you got that many people and sure. it's cold but it, it you know what it's exciting there's a lot of neat things happening as you see here uh we're helping people get ids we're helping people get jobs we're helping people turn their lives around it's one step at a time and it takes time it takes time to uh to do things uh we have a lot of things to take care of equipment people places uh, we're constantly cleaning, constantly doing this, constantly doing that. Uh, we thank God for the Good Samaritan Free Health Clinic comes in on Monday. Dr. Draper and, and the two Karens, the mm -hmm. two nurses come in. Then on Wednesday, Shenandoah Community Health Center comes in. The nurses come in. Um, we just uh, – it, it's a community effort. It's great. It's a blessing. Um, we do need donations right now. January is a tough month for us. Our heating bill is extremely high. Uh, our um, – a lot of things have broken down on us. We, I just gave you those two big ones. What does it typically cost to heat the mission during the winter? I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, it, it's it's in the thousands. I don't know the exact per number. Per month? Yeah, per wow. month because it changes. And, like, right now we have to – um, with the guys' dorms, I, we keep it around 65, I think, 66, because when you put that many guys in the dorm – in it, and then they sleep. They complain going in, but then I walk through the dorms at night, and it's and you, the, the body heat, you know, the snoring and everything. <laughs> it's, it's, you might hear some sounds going 
<laughs> but the body heat, the body heat brings it up. So right. it brings it up to 68, 69. So that's that's nice because you make it too warm, then it's uh, you know it's not good wise right. health wise. We try to keep keep it the cool. infection you right know, exactly lower it's temperatures. Al- it's almost like a hospital type thing. Right. You want to keep it down. So there's a lot of things I have to do and know and go around and make sure everybody else does because we only have 10 staff we have 10 staff to do everything paid staff Mm -hmm. everything else is done by volunteers and the folks that live there and it's an amazing i mean bill will tell you it's an amazing it's a lot to do it's a lot to do a lot to stay on top of um well our guy our food service guy just got teeth his teeth in um he uh also safe serve we're getting another guy safe serve uh, we got another guy safe serve. I mean, there's so many things that we got to do to stay on top of things. It's amazing. But January's, January and February hit us hard financially. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Tim, I'm I'm intrigued about on one of these cold, cold, cold nights mm-hmm. as opposed during the day. Yeah. Do you make rounds to the uh, to, to the homeless at night? And I, I can and I have. And, and if I get calls, I go out. Like I've been out this morning going out addressing people talking to people as i shared with you i don't know if you were in here when i shared about the gentleman i yes. went out to visit mm-hmm. today um and they have the choice because you know i can't force somebody to come in it's you know i can't grab them and say you're coming in <laughs> uh, you know it's a choice like i do with my co-host <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. it's a choice yeah. uh many of them come in uh and and we drop a lot of restrictions that we would normally have uh, when it's normal weather and stuff like that for, for coming in. Um, but, um, you know, we, uh, a lot of them choose to stay out for many reasons. Um, a lot of them choose to stay out because um, 90%, and, and I know I'm going to get all the emails and all the fan club out there, you know, not, not, and, and it's a fact, 90% of them stay out because they're using mm-hmm. and they don't want to come in. Mm-hmm. And just like the guy I dealt with this morning, well, he's one of the ones I dealt with this morning, and I even asked him, I said, do you have your booze on you? Yeah. And I said to him, you know, that's not good in this kind of weather. It's, it's fooling your brain. It's telling you you're warm, but you're not. And, oh, I'm, I'm okay in here, Pastor Tim. I got, and he's holding his bottles. I got, I got my buddies here, and I'm okay. And I, I say, and he knows he can come in. He said, I know. He said, I was there, and I ate yesterday. He said, I was at the mission, I ate yesterday. I said, well, you know you can come in. He goes, oh, I know, I know. So, you know, uh, we do go out, we do those things, we, we open the doors. Um, just like I said to you, we have 104 people of all of our resident uh, programs that are staying there. You tell me what other nonprofits doing that. I mean, na- name me one. That's not getting government funding. We don't get government funding. Tim, let me jump in here real quick. Yeah. Your official Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission Facebook page posted in our comments section. Our yeah. current main food needs right now are fruit, yeah. canned or fresh. Yeah butter plus the coffee creamer and sugar right. and also for as little as ten dollars a month donation to the mission you can help us provide a hot meal three times a day for all in need yes safe warm shelter for those with no place to go yes life-changing guidance uh discipleship and they posted a link uh where you can make a donation if you want to click on that in our comment section <coughs> thank you and and and, and like you're talking about the coffee mm-hmm. goes 24 7. Yeah. we have people mm-hmm. coming in 24 7 and we have the the 100 uh, we we go through two, their their hundred cup coffee. We go through two of them in like an hour and a half. That's how much coffee because right. it's cold. Uh, I mean it's, <laughs> I mean the stuff we go through. And then we we have a guy that just sits at the coffee station cleaning the coffee mm-hmm. station, literally cleaning the coffee station, making sure there's this, making sure it's wiped down, making sure it's clean, uh, um, taking away the stuff because not everybody that comes in is 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 hospitable. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Rob, Rob gave a, a list there of yeah. things that you all need, and yeah. coffee definitely one of them. You yeah. think at home, how much coffee you use just to make a ten cup craft of coffee? Yeah. You can all, it only magnifies when you're making oh. a hundred cup urn yeah. of coffee. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the challenge needs to be put out there to our our churches. Yep. We are some very loving, giving community churches within berkeley county yes that need to step up to the plate and help those that are in need and morgan county now and we're, morgan, we're yeah, in morgan true. county don't want to leave yeah. out morgan county yeah. Yeah. um but the churches need to i know our church collects for a number of different ones and your all's is one of them yeah. and just set aside a month and, and put up to your congregations these are the needs yeah. that's on that list there and and they'll fit they'll meet those needs yeah. but i also have a question for you pastor do you the people coming in 
do they have clothing, coats, winter coats, gloves? It, some do and, and some don't. And, it, and, and we ask for that also. We need the coats. We need the hats. We need the gloves. And if they don't, we take them over to the store, the thrift store. Mm-hmm. We can get there. And then we also have where, where the people bring them in. Because um, people have this misconception that when we take them to the thrift store, they have to pay for something. No, mm-hmm. they don't. Right. It's a vo- We have a voucher system. Mm-hmm. And they get a voucher and then go over there and get all that stuff if we don't have it at the front desk for them. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times people bring in the hats, the gloves, the mittens. We ha- we the front desk it's a big front desk mm-hmm. we lay the stuff out on the kind on of thing and then or they ask socks we need socks mm-hmm. uh, especially for those that are living outside they need the socks because their feet get wet so we need socks we need um, now we need all kinds of feminine products because we have a lot of females staying with us children products because mm-hmm. we have children staying with us one of the things we're going to do is uh to talk to you we're working on a dental program because now with all the children and women and stuff staying with us dental issues in need uh the abscess issues in need because they come in with abscesses and it's really difficult uh, especially for kids going to school trying to learn what an abscess i mean adults were babies let alone <laughs> i know that my teeth hurt <laughs> my wife goes you're a baby <laughs> suck it up <laughs> so, <laughs> you got a toothache that ruins your day man yeah, yeah. yeah so but all those things you're mentioning yes yes we do need and um it's it's you know it, it's it's really neat because we do live in a this is a very giving area and i thank god for it yes um i thank god for the community coming together because it's amazing when i tell people how many people were actually housing and then on top of that how many hundreds a day sometimes thousands a day that we serve from the community that comes through our doors and people are blown away and i tell them i say look you have no idea then uh i mean the numbers are there the need is there what we do is, is it, it, it's amazing how this community comes together and helps us. You mentioned the word, and I agree totally about it, being a compassionate community. And there are several organizations that work oh, together. Oh, absolutely. During the, this, this cold period, of course, the major emphasis is getting service to anybody, no questions asked. Mm-hmm. But when we are less emergency conditions, what's the coordination between all the various organizations, especially are the duplicate, uh, duplication of services. There are certain people that try to play the system, how they are dressed, weeded out. What's the coordination? Uh, there's a lot. There's coordination there and a lot. Most most uh, organizations uh, know who the people are manipulating and duplicating yeah. the services, and, and it's a shame that that happens, and that happens. Um, and then we limit those folks to what they could get and what they cannot get because they're draining the system by uh, duplicating, sometimes triplicating, sometimes <laughs> as much as they can get. Yeah. Um, so uh, and most most agencies and stuff know that. And we know who the ones that are, uh, when it gets cold, will will follow the rules. And then when it gets warm, they won't follow the rules. Mm-hmm. So um, we, we everybody knows who that is and, and, and stuff like that. The agencies, I would say, work well together. Um, there's some misunderstandings. I mean, a lot of uh, agencies will assume, well, you're the rescue mission. And I, I still haven't gotten a definition for that. What does that mean? We're the rescue mission. I get that thrown at me a lot. Well, you're the rescue mission. Mm-hmm. Okay. What does that mean? We're not a hospital. We're not a nursing home. We're not assisted living. Right. You know, we don't have doctors. We mm-hmm. don't have nurses. We, our facility's not set up to do those things. But I get that a lot. So there's a lot of challenges. Um, I think it's important at Bill, and, and, and we have done, I know I have done as much outreach to other organizations, people, um, individuals, schools. Had a blessing to go to uh, uh, speak at uh, Shepherd University uh, back in November, December at one of the so, uh, social workers class. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just awesome to get to meet a lot of them because they had a lot of different understanding of the rescue mission and now a lot of those folks are over there helping us um we work with a lot of uh wvu we work with uh different agencies do work with a lot of law enforcement um so there's a there's a lot of misconceptions a lot of people like when i was on here last time uh, there's a misconception well if a person gets a job you kick them out no we don't mm. <laughs> no we don't <laughs> you know but there and 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 i even did a video on explaining the whole situation here i mean we uh, 169 people last year we helped get employment and stayed there richard who works for us as food service manager saved up his money to get his teeth mm-hmm. which is lots of money and now he's getting his bottom teeth uh we don't kick people out <laughs> but there's this misconception of a lot of things and then people label us and they run with that 
Um, just like I was telling you that guy this morning I met. Well, I don't have the ID, you know, and and the guy that runs the mission won't let me in. Really? The guy that runs the mission? Well, I think I know that guy, <laughs> you know. And, oh, oh, Pastor Tim, I didn't realize it was you. <laughs> yeah, the guy that runs the mission. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's just amazing, those kind of things. But you're right. It's it's const- that, That's why I thank you guys for letting me be on here. Um uh, the newsletter we send out the thousands we have a mass mailer that goes out four times a year to 38,000 people um it goes out uh, we have uh, podcasts we have this we have that Be- to get that community it's constant communication um you said a w- while bill when i first came here you know doug winmeyer doug winmeyer oh, yeah. walked me around to like 200 different people literally walked me around knocked on people's doors said you're going to meet this guy you're going to see this guy you're going to talk to this guy and uh, I still do that today. I get out, talk to people, meet with people, sit down with people, explain to people. Um, I, I met with a couple Saturday that just moved into the area from Virginia, um, a gentleman that uh, works for um, Border Patrol and his wife and, and um, has extensive military background. And he's retiring, came into this area, he wants to serve this area, and him and his wife, and sat down and met them. I, I come in on my days off. I, um, I preach at churches. I speak at, last year I spoke at... Uh, I spoke at 72 churches last year, I think, mm. different churches. I can't remember. And, and so every, t- every day I'm out there doing whatever I can to get the communication out. Is there always the miscommunication? There's some people I'll say to them, well, why don't you come and tour the mission? Well, I know what the mission is. I spoke at a group two weeks ago, three weeks ago. I don't even remember how long ago it was. <laughs> and I walked in, this lady says, oh, I, I know all about the mission. I said, oh, okay. She goes, yeah, Pastor Crow and I are real good friends. I said, okay. She goes, well, by the way, how is Pastor Crow doing? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, well, obviously you haven't been at the mission in a long time. <laughs> he, yeah. he's, he's pushing up daisies. You know, it's like, um, you know, it's, it, and, and, and so I always tell him, come to the mission, see, see the changes, see the mm-hmm. things that's going on. Pastor Crow did a phenomenal job. The legacy, uh, Pastor Crow built the basement in the first floor. I'm just building the second floor. Mm-hmm. I'm just adding the second floor. I'm, I'm, the legacy he left is tremendous. I could never, never, never fill that man's shoes, never did what he did. Uh, his family committed a lot of things, lived, uh, uh, just lived the mission and built it up. I, my job, I come along and, and, I, and I do these things, just like this Ukraine trip. People say, um, you're going to Ukraine again. Yeah, I said, because there's a, I, what I do here is what's also needed over there. They have thousands of people in crisis, and they have nowhere to put them, nowhere to go. They're stacked. They, they're now uh, human trafficking is taking place. There's all, you know, because if you don't have something good to give them, the bad's going to come along and go here, okay? So it, 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 a lot of things are happening. So they're asking Christians, and Christians are, are, are putting stuff together to do something permanent to, to go forward. All I'm doing is extending what I do here at the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission overseas to do the work over there. But this community is phenomenal. Uh, I think this community does a great job. I love, you, I love listening to the show, I, <laughs> all the different politics. I cross all the lines. Yeah. I, I, I have to because I don't, I, I don't get into the politics. I get into Jesus. I get into taking the gospel to, to the least and, and ministering to those that, that, that society has basically given up on. Uh, you're unique in several regards. You're not unique in the fact that you bring compassion and, pa- uh, compassion and passion to your job. Other organizations do the same thing. Oh, absolutely. We have some phenomenal organizations. Yeah. But you are an outstanding communicator. And this, I think, is what makes you different than some of the other organizations. Yeah. Uh, I would encourage other organizations to take advantage of the of the avenues for communication. Yes, as you do. Yeah. So. Well, and, and about um, thirty seconds too. Yeah, and and, and and again, you can go to the Martinsburg Union Rescue Commission dot dot yeah. org. Hit the donate button. Our January month is tough. It's tough on us. We really need a five dollar, ten dollar, twenty dollar donation. Uh, we're hit hard with the bills and everything. If you want to support me, go on over to the Ukraine trip. Hit that button too. Same thing there. Mark Ukraine trip on there. But folks, um, we can't do it without you. Well, we love we love this community. We love God's people here. Love you guys. Thank you for all that you do. God bless you. Till next time, and stay warm. Stay, <laughs> stay warm. warm. Good to see you, Pastor Thank Tim. Thank you so much, Pastor Tim, from the Rescue Mission at nine fifty-seven.